أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات انا لا نضيع اجر من احسن عملا اولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الانهار يحلون فيها من اساور من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس واستبرق متكئين فيها على الارائك نعم الثواب وحسنت مرتفقا صدق الله العظيم It's a general rule in Quran that whenever there is a mention of the people of the hell then for a simultaneous contrast the people of Jannah the people of paradise are also mentioned So in the fourth section of Surah Al-Kahf we have already read about the people who will be in the hell ان اعطنا للظالمين نارا احاط بهم سرادقها you know they will be surrounded by fire and the smoke of of hell why yastaghisu yughasu bi ma'in kal muhl and if they will ask for some water they will be given some molten brass molten copper to drink which will be very hot yes will we do it will roast their mouths and faces بیس شراب و سات مرتفقا اٹ ول بی ویری بیڈ تھنگ ٹو ڈرنک اینڈ اے ویری بیڈ پلیس ٹو ریسٹ ناؤ ان کنٹراسٹ ان لذین آمن و عامل صالحات ویری لی دوز ہو کیم ٹو بلیو اینڈ ہو ڈڈ گڈ ڈیڈس ان لان ازی و اجر امن احسن عمل اب وی آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو ٹو ویسٹ دی ریوارڈ آف دوز ہو ہیو بین ڈوئنگ گڈ ڈیڈس ulaik lahum jannat wa adnin for them will be the residential gardens of perpetuity of eternity tajri min tahtihim al anhar underneath them rivers rivers will be flowing yahallauna fiha min asawira min zahabin they will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold wa yalbasuna siyaban khudran and they will be wearing dress which will be green colored min sundusin wa istabrak robes of silk and brocade muttaqeen fiha ala al-araik and they will be sitting over there on raised couches name as sawab it will be a very good reward that will be given to them wa hasanat murtafaqa and it will be a very goodly place to rest now in the next session allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an example of two persons who are friends one was wealthy the other was poor but the wealthy one became haughty and the poor one was he was loyal to his lord allah subhanahu wa taala so there is a conversation between them one rib lahum masalar rajulain the late o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to them the story of two people the example of two persons jalna li ahadihim jannatain min adabin we had given to one of them two gardens of grapes wa hafafna huma bi nakhlin and we are surrounding those gardens of grapes with the palm trees date palm trees wa jalna baina huma zara in between the two gardens there was an agricultural farm also so all the things that he needed were there there were fruits there were grapes there were dates and there was the farm in which you know corn or etc etc or wheat whatsoever he needed he could he could cultivate kilta jannatain aata to kulaha wa lam taslim minhu shay'a both the gardens produced its fruit and never you know decreased it in any way 
وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرَا And we had caused to gush forth between them a river. A river was also flowing between the two. وَكَانَ لَهُ سَمَرْ And he had fruit. Now it has two meanings. Either the gardens were laden with fruit. Or you know, fruit of a man is his progeny. Daughters, sons. So maybe, as we shall see later on, he had many sons. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَكَانَ لَهُ سَمَرْ فَقَالَ لِسَاحِبِهِ Now he said to his, his friend, his, his man, companion, وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ And they were having a conversation among them. أَنَا أَكْسَرُ مِلْكَ مَا لَمْ وَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I have more wealth than you have. And I have more strength. And the number of people I have with me is much greater than you have. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ And then he entered his garden. وَهُوَ ظَالِمُ لِنَفْسِهِ And he was doing wrong to himself. قَالَ مَا أَظُنُّ وَنْ تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدَا He said, I don't think that this garden can perish ever. وَمَا أَظُنُّ سَعَةَ قَائِمَةً In the same way, I don't think that the hour and, and the sa'ah and qiyamah is going to come. وَلَا يُرُدِتْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي And supposedly, if I am returned to my Lord, لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا I'll definitely find much better things over there when I go back to my Lord. قَالَ لَهُ صَحِبُهُ Now this is a sort of mentality of rich people. They think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us some, this thing in this world. It means we deserve it. So we shall get in the afterwards also, in the hereafter also. So here he was thinking, primarily either there is no hereafter, no resurrection. But if there is any resurrection, and if there is the life of hereafter, then I shall get more than what I am getting here. Qala sahibuhu. Now his companion said to him, وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ And he was conversing with him. أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَ كَمِنْ تُرَابِ Are you denying your Lord who has created you out of the dust? ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةً And then from a sperm drop, ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجَلًا And then he made you a complete man. لَكِنَّ هُوَ اللَّهُ رَبِّي but as for me, I accept Allah as my Lord. And I'm not ready to associate anybody else with Him. And why it was not the case that when you entered your garden and you were pleased to see the garden laden with fruit, you should have said, MashaAllah, this is actually because Allah decreed it to be so. This is because Allah wanted it to be so. It's by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever I have. La quwwata illa billah. There is no power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In tarane, if you are seeing me, ana aqalla min kabalam wa balada, that I am less than you in my wealth as well as my sons. Fa asara bi ayyuti yani khayra min jannatik. It's just possible. That my Lord gives me a garden better than yours. By your sala alayha husbanan. And he may send over your garden a thunderbolt from heaven. And then all this garden and all this agricultural form, it will become a slippery plateau. Or you speha mauha garden, and it is also possible that this water of this river may go down into the earth. فَلَن تَسْتَقِيَ لَهُ تَلَبَا And then it becomes impossible for you to get the water out of the earth. وَأَوْهِتَ بِسَمَرِهِ Now what this person said, it actually happened. He was someone from Aulia Allah. Allah loved him. And whatever he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually did the same for with that person. And his gardens were destroyed. All the fruit was taken away from him. And now he remained there, rubbing his hands against each other. 
or the wealth that he had invested. The garden has been finished. There came, you know, a thunderstorm, a thunderbolt, and everything was gone. He had invested, he had invested a lot. يُقَلَّبُ كَفَيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَابِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا And the garden was lying down on its supports. There are supports for the grape, you know. So now these supports are down. وَيَقُولُ And then he said, يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي أَحَدَا Would that I had not associated anyone with my Lord. Now the question is, whom he had associated with the Lord. There is no mention here of any Lat, Manat, Uzza, Hobal, no. No God. He believes in one God. Only what he says is that I don't think there is going to be any resurrection. I don't think. And if there is resurrection, this God has given me this thing over here, he will give these things, better things to me in the hereafter also. And he was so confident of his garden. I don't think it can perish, it can be destroyed. What is it? This is the faith in material resources. Here matter and material resources have become God for him. He has all the faith and trust in the material resources. And this is the biggest shirk of today. What is the shirk? Very few people today in this world might be worshipping idols. Even Hindus, very few. Only the lower strata of the society going to temples and worshipping, you know, idols. The higher elite of Indian society also doesn't go to temples, doesn't worship these idols. The shirk is, number one, human sovereignty. This is the biggest shirk. Sovereignty belongs to whom? If you claim sovereignty, you are making yourself equal to Allah. This is number one shirk. Then all the confidence, all trust in matter and material resources. While Iman says that you should have all trust in God, not in the matter, not in the material resources. So this was the shirk that he was committing, not the shirk of, of worshipping other gods and goddesses. وَلَمْ تَكُلْ لَهُ فِيَتُوا يَنْصُرُونَهُ But then there had been no hosts who could have helped him مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا كَانَ مُنْتَصِرَا And it was not possible for him to take revenge. From whom could he take the revenge? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed his gardens. هُنَالِكَ الْوَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ Here all authority belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walaya, this is Walaya. And another word is Vilaya. Vilaya is from Wali. When there is mutual brotherhood, mutual friendship, it is Vilaya. But authority is from, Walaya is from Wali. Wali is the person who rules some place or some, some country, Wali. And from Wali is Walaya. So authority. Authority here belongs to Allah and Allah alone. Hunalikal Walaya to Lillahi al he is the best in rewarding. And he is the best regarding the final results. Strike to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a similitude for the life of this world. It's like the water that we send down from the heaven. Rain comes down. فَاخْتَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ and with this water, rain, water of rain, you know, intermingles the vegetation of the earth, of the land, and comes out. Otherwise, the land was without any greenery, no vegetation, barren. Now water came down, rain poured, and now there is vegetation. So vegetation intermingled with that water and came out. After some time, this vegetation... This becomes dry and broken in pieces. And now the air is taking it from this side to that side, etc. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful over everything. Now this is, you know, we, our body, as I said in the Friday sermon today, those of you who are present, 
Our animal existence, our body comes from clay. Our ruh comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as the rain comes down and the vegetation of the earth comes out due to that rain. Ruh comes from there and the body which is coming from the clay, they do join together and that is the life of this world. When we die, the body will go back. Minha khalaknakum, wa fiha nuridukum, wa minha nukhrijuhum taratan nukhra. But the ruh and the nafs, the life, they will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-mal wa al-banuna zinatul hayat al-dunya. Wealth and sons, they are the adornment of this life of this world. Now this word zina is coming for the third time here in this surah. First of all, in the first section we had, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةَ اللَّهَا لِنَبْلُوَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Whatever is over this earth, we have made it an adornment for this world. It looks very beautiful. And we want to test whether you love this world or you love us. This is the test. Number two, we found, O oh Muhammad, your eyes should not go to the those people who have zinat of dunya. Adornment of dunya. وَلَا تَعْدُوا عَيْنَا كَانْهُمْ تُرِيدُوا زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا These people who are rich, who are the chieftains, they have the adornment of this worldly life. But you shouldn't go towards them. You shouldn't pay more attention to them. You, pay poor, you devote more attention to your poor, your ahle iman, your brothers in faith. Although they are poor, but they go on praying Allah, calling in the morning and evening. Calling upon him. And now third time here. Al-Malu wal banuna zinatul hayat al dunya. This wealth that you have in this world and your sons, they are adornment of this life of this world. Wal baqiyatu salihat. But the things which will remain are the righteous deeds. Sons will remain here. They are not going to go with you in the grave. Your wealth will remain here. It's not going to go with you in the grave. What will you take into the graves with you? Will be the good deeds. They will be permanently with you. If you have done some. Well, baqiyatu salihat. The things which remains and which is eternal, they are the good deeds. Khairun in the rabbi ka sawabam wa khairun amala. And these good deeds are better. Near your Lord, when you, when you stand before your Lord. And they are better that you can have hope something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for these deeds. And when we should make the mountains move, they will move and they will become dust. There will be no mountains. It will all be a plain earth. And you will see this land, this earth, Absolutely leveled and plain, without any adornment. Now the skyscrapers skyscraper gone, buildings gone, palaces gone, even Himalayas gone. All things gone. It's all plain land. Bahasharnahum, and then we shall gather them, all of them, all human beings. Walam nuhadil minhum ahada, and will not leave even one of them, all the human beings. <clears throat> from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam to the last human being who will be there in his progeny till the end of this world, till Qiyamah, they will all be present over there. They will all be resurrected and they will have to stand there. And then as I quoted earlier also, the ayat from Surah Al-Fajr, Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will himself descend. And angels in rows and columns and ranks. And then you know, there will be the accountability of the day of judgment. And the judgments will be passed. They will be presented before their Lord in ranks and lines. Very beautiful. Allah would say, now you have come to us in the same form in which we had created you for the first time. What was that creation of the first time? And what is the creation of the second time? 
First of all, all of us were created as spirits. No bodies. All the spirits of all the human beings, from Adam till the last man. And we were present there. And we made the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alastu bi rabbikum, alu bala. Am I not your Lord? Why not? Oh Allah, we accept you as the Lord. This was the covenant. This is the covenant of Allah, we call it. So this is, we were all present there. But there was no relationship, no father, no son, no grandfather, no grandson, all, all in only the spiritual forms, not the bodies. Then what happened? Then when, you know, this world of matter was created, and now when a human being's fetus is completed in the womb of the mother, the root, the spirit is brought from there and joined with it. And according to a hadith, it is done after four months. It is the hadith from Abdullah ibn Masood, that for 40 days, you know, it's the Nutfa stage. Then for 40 days, it is Muzga stage, Alaka stage. 3 into 40, 120 days, that is four months. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel and he blows the ruh into it. Now it becomes human being, just as about Adam, وَإِذَا خَلَقْتُهُ وَسَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ In the same way, the son of Adam in the womb of his mother, when it is, this fetus is four months old, that ruh is brought and it is blown into him. So now, just as we were standing, all of us, together, before Lord, when we made the covenant, in the same way, on the day of judgment, we shall be standing all of us together. Father with the son, and grandfather and grandson, all. Adam, from Adam to the last man, which, which will come in this world, they will all be present. As we had created you for the first time. Creation for the second time is in the womb of the mother. Bodily creation was in the womb of the mother. First creation was only of the spirits of human beings. Wabadi al-Kitab, and now the record of the deeds of the people will be brought and placed. Maybe it is a very giant computer. You, know, you only touch one button, and the whole film of a human being's life is there, you can see. Whatever he uttered is there. Whatever he did is there. For every being, every human being. You will see that these culprits, evil doers, will be very much fearful of what is there in this record. And they will say, Ah, woe to us! What type of a record it is? It has not omitted even the smallest details. All the sins, they have been commuted here. They have been computed here. Everything is here. And they will find whatever they had done present before their eyes. Your Lord is not going to do injustice to anybody. Everybody will be repaid. What he did. Not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish one without any deeds, bad deeds that he had committed. Your Lord is not going to punish anybody and do any injustice to anybody. Now the seventh section starts, as I told you, with the same story of Adam and Iblis. And when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, they all prostrated except Iblis. But this is the only place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified that Iblis was not an angel. Kana min al jinn. He was one of the jinns. Now, Malaika were created out of light. In the same way, human spirits, Arwa, they are also created out of light. Jinn, Jinnat, they were created out of fire. And lastly, human beings along with all the animals of this, on this world, they were created from the, this dust or mud, or whatever you may call it, from the clay. 
So these are three levels of creation. Highest level from light, the angels and the human spirits. Second intermediary level from fire, they are the jinnat. And the lowest level, our animal being. But our existence is twofold. This animal being is at the lowest level, but of the highest level is the spirit that is blown into us. So we have a double existence. While jinnat, they are midway, but they are better than our animal existence. But we are better than them due to the spirits that have been blown into us, and that those are from the light. So jinn can disobey Allah. Humans can disobey Allah. But now the question is why this was included among the angels? They say that he was a very pious, very pious, very learned jinn. And he had been joined with the angels. Because you know, Noor and Nar are very close to each other. Malaika created out of Noor. And Jinnat created out of Nar. And Noor and Nar, they are very close to each other. In between is one harf illat as they call them, which interchanges from this to that, from alif to waw and ye. These three letters, you know, they are ruful illah. Anyhow, there is not time for these discussions. Kana min al jinn, he was from amongst the jinns. Fa fasaka namri rabbihi, so he disobeyed the command of his lord. Fa afatat taqizuna hu wa zuriyatahu aliya bin duni wa humlu kumadu. Now you, O oh, the progeny of Adam. Do you want to take him, Iblis, and his progeny, friends to you, leaving me, your Lord, who placed Adam, your grandfather, above the Jinnat and above the Malaika? But now you are befriending Iblis. He is your, he is your enemy. Now you are befriending this Iblis and his progeny. And leaving me, Wahum Lakum Aduv, although they are your enemies. Besadizalimina Badala. Bad is the exchange for these evildoers. Not befriending Allah, but befriending Iblis. Mashfatuhum Khalka Sabavati wa Lord. I had not taken them witnesses when we created the heavens and the earth. Wala Khalka al Fusain. Not the creation of themselves. Mama kunta mutta khidal mudillin azuda. And I am not the one who can take these people who led others to astray as helpers. Wayama yakulu nadu shurakai yaladina zamtum. This subject has come many times before also. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Now call those people or those deities or those gods, false gods, that you used to call upon and pray in the in the in the life of your that world. Allah dina zamtu fadaohum. They will call them. Falam yastajibu lahum. But they will not answer them. Wajalna bainahum maubaka. And we shall set up a gulf of destruction in between them. Waral mujribun and nar. And these culprits, these evildoers, they will see the fire. فَزَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ وَاقِعُوهَا And they will be sure now that they are going to be thrown into it. وَلَمْ يَجِدُوا عَنْهَا مَسْرِفَا And they will not find any escape, any place to, to save themselves from this fire. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرَانِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَسَلِ This ayah was there in Surah Tumar Israel also. Only the sequence of the words has changed. We have explained in this Quran, for the benefit of humanity, all the similitudes will pull the muscle and in the various forms, various words, various styles, various sequences. But man is more than all the creatures in quarreling. He is more quarrelsome than any of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not ready to accept. And nothing has prevented the people in believing when this guidance has come to them. And so that they ask forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the only reason is 
that the unfortunate end of the ancient nations is going to come to them. Or the divine chastisement will come before them face to face. And we don't send, and we have not been sending our messengers, except as the bearers of the glad tidings and as warners. And those who disbelieve, they rebut the truth by falsehood. So that they may rebut the, the truth. With Batil. Ayati Waba Unzaru Huzawa and they have taken my revelations, my ayat, with which they are being warned as a mockery, as a laughing stock. Who is more evil doer than the person who is reminded, admonished with the revelations of his Lord? Faradanha, he turns his face away from them. Manasiya Makadamat Yada and just forget what his both hands have sent forward in stock in the for, for the life hereafter. Inna Jalna La Kulubihim Akinatan. We have put on their hearts wheels. This aya also has appeared in Surah Surah Bani Israel, we have read it. They can't understand it. Wafi Adani Vakra. We have put heaviness in their ears. And if you call them towards guidance, they are, they are never going to be guided to the right path. Now they have rejected the truth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also put a seal on their hearts. Your Lord is a forgiving Lord. The merciful, Now you ask the whom Mima Kasabu. Had he seized human beings, mankind, on whatever they did, I commit a sin now, and Allah gives the punishment right now. But in that case, we have read before also, no no living creature would have persisted, or we would have remained on the earth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't punish immediately. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have sent the chastisement for them very early. But lahum I don't know. For them there is a time fixed. And they will not find any escape from that fixed time. And these are the cities where Qawmi Aad, nation of Aad, nation of Hud used to live. Those places where Samud, to whom Hazrat Saleh was sent, used to live. Those cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to which Hazrat Lut was sent. We destroyed them. And for their destruction, we had fixed a time. A time which was fixed for that. Now, in the next two sections, there is the story. A journey which Hazrat Musa والسلام, took with someone. We are not sure who was he, whose name is not given. Generally we know him by the name of Khizr alayhi salam. There are various opinions about the person of and personality of Khizr. One is that he was an angel sent down on this earth so that he teaches to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wasalam some of the wisdom, divine wisdom. Some think that he was a saint dead long before. But his spirit is there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has retained it in this world, and it guides people on different occasions, etc., etc. But I think there's no need of going into this discussion. Only the essence of what he taught and what is the reality that Moses came to know through him, that is important. Just recall when Moses said to his servant, La abrahu hatta abluga majmal bahrain, awam ziya hukma. I am not going to give up until I reach the place where the two rivers or two seas, they meet. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told him, go there, where the two rivers or two seas, they meet. 
and there you will find a person, and he will teach, teach you certain things. Now there are two opinions. One is that this is what the Neel, River Nile, and Neel Arzak, Al Neel Abiyas. There are two Niles, you know, in in Sudan, but then they join together, and when they when it enters Egypt, it is one Nile. So maybe the joining place of the two Niles, you know, the Blue Nile and the White Nile, might be that place where he was sent. Allahu Alam. So he said, I am not going to give up till I reach there, where the two seas or rivers meet. Or I can go on for years. When they both reached the point of meeting of those two rivers, they had for their, you know, breakfast or something like that, some fish, roasted fish. They forgot to take with them. Now this roasted fish became alive and dug a burrow in the sand and, and went into the sea or the river. When both of them had gone further, now Musa said to his servant, Bring us that breakfast, our food. Now we have tired. We have got it, you know, with, from this journey. We have been tired now. The servant was Joshua of Bible, Joshua. And we call them Yusha ibn Noon. Joshua, he became the caliph after Hazrat Musa, alayhi salatu was salam. And under his leadership, the Bani Israel, they captured Jericho. Jericho is the city, which was the first city which was captured in Palestine by Bani Israel under the command of Joshua. And this Joshua is as a servant with Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam in this journey. Ta'ala Joshua said to him, Look, is Avaina ila sakhrate? When we had taken refuge on that chatan, on that sakhra, on that rock, I just forgot to look after that fish. Definitely, Satan made me forget that I didn't mention it to you. And that fish that became alive, and then it took the, its way into this, into the sea or into the river. And it's a very strange thing that has happened. Ta'ala zalika ma kunna nabwe. Moses said, Musa alayhi salam was upset. This, what, with, this is what we were looking for. Allah has told him that something very strange will happen somewhere. And there you will find the person to whom we are sending you. Ta'ala zalika ma kunna nabwe. He said, this is what we were after. Now they retraced their steps and came back to that place where the two rivers were meeting and where that fish had disappeared into the water. There they found our bondsman, one of our bondsmen, Abdam bin Ibadina, one of our servant, from our servants, Atainahu Rahmatam Minna. We had given them mercy from us. And we had taught him knowledge from the store of knowledge with us. Musa. Musa said to him, Should I follow you? I remain with you. Keep your company. But you will have to teach me some of what you have been taught of right judgment some of the knowledge, special knowledge that Allah has given you, if you promise to teach me, then I should remain with you for some time, for some days. He said, you won't be able to have patience with me. And how can you have patience about those things, about the knowledge of which you don't have? Apparently you'll find I'm doing something wrong, and you will not be able to Keep quiet. You will speak out. And just that uh, happened, we will see later on. So you will not be able to be patient with me. Moses said, Inshallah, you will find me patient person. 
Wala asi la kamra and I will never disobey you. Whatever you, you, your instruction, I will follow. Kala fine tabatani. Then he said, if you follow me, if you, if you keep my company, falata salni and shayin, then don't ask anything from me. Hatta ohde salaka bin ho zikra. Till such time that I myself disclose to you some of the secrets of what I have been doing. Fantalaka, now they departed. Hatta iza rakeba fi safinate. But when they mounted, boarded a boat, kharakaha, he made a hole in the boat, bottom of the boat. Kala kharaktaha le tohrika ahlaha. How could Hazrat Musa be patient with it? He said, you have made a hole in the bottom of the boat. You want to drown its occupants? Certainly you have done a very grievous thing. He said, didn't I say to you, you will not be able to be patient with me. He said, you don't bring to me to the book on which I have forgotten. It was just, you know, I forgot. Reproach me not for which I forgot. And oppress me not in my affair. He said, okay. Then they continued their journey. Till that time that they met a young boy and he killed him. Musa said, you have killed a human life, innocent life. Without his having having been having killed anybody, no law. Naka jeta shayan nukta. Again, you have done something very bad. Taala alama kulla ka inna kalan tastatiya maya sabra. That person said, "Didn't I say to you that you won't be able to have patience with me?" Taala in sal to kaan shayin baadaha falatu saibni. Hazrat Musa said, "Now if I ask anything again, then you can say me to depart." Then don't keep me with you. Lakat balakta min ladunni uzra. You have reached now that level of excuse about me. I won't be able to complain that why you are parting ways from me. Because twice I have committed a mistake. But if a third time I commit a mistake, you will be justified to say go away. Fan talaka. Again they continued the journey. Hatta iza ataya ahla kariya tenistatama ahlaha. Till such time that they came to a township. And they wanted the people of that town or village to feed them. Travelers, you know, in the olden times, people used to feed them as guests. For Abawa, you said, you Fuma. But those people were so wicked of that township that they, they denied, they refused to feed them and to play host to them. For Vajada Fiha Jedaran Yuridu in Qabwa. Now they found there in that city or township, a wall which was going to collapse. Fa'aqama, that person was there, that person Khizr, he straightened it, rectified it. Ta'ala law shayta la tahasta alayhi ajra. Hazrat Musa said, you could demand, you don't labor from them. They are so wicked people, they are not ready to feed us, and you have done this work for them without any wages. You should have demanded wages. Ta'ala haza firaqo baydi wa baynik. He said, now this is the parting of time. This is the time of parting of ways between me and you. So, now I am going to disclose to you the secrets about which you couldn't be patient. Number one, as for that boat, that belonged to certain poor people who are working on the sea, taking person passengers from this side to that side. Faratuan Aibaha and I intendedly I damaged it. Vakana Varahum Maliku Yahudu Kulla Safira Tin Rasma because behind them there was a king who was confiscating and annexing all the boats. Now when he will see that this boat is damaged, he will spare it. So this whole boat will be spared for them. Had it been correct and absolutely fit then the whole boat would have gone from them. So actually, you think that I have done something bad for them, it is actually good for them, for their benefit, that now that king will not take this, this boat from them. 
As for that boy, Fakana Bawahu Muminen, his parents are believers and they are good people. Fakashina Yurika Humatu Yanam Kufra. We feared that if this boy becomes mature, he will oppress his parents with insolence and ingratitude. He could see that he is not a gentle man, gentle boy. He will be a headache for the parents. So we decided that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him back and give them in his place another son who might be better than him in purity and nearer in affection. And as for the wall, It belonged to two orphan boys in the city. وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزُلْ لَهُمَا Beneath the foundation of that wall, there was a treasure for them. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا And the father of these two orphans, he was a very pious person. He had saved something for his young orphan sons, you know, when he was dying. And he buried there in the foundation of this wall. Now if this wall, is, if it collapses, the treasure will be apparent, it will come out. And people will take it because the orphans are still minor. They won't be able to protect their wealth. So, Farada Rabboka, so your Lord decided it, and Yabloga Ashuddahuba, they reach their maturity, and then they take out from that the foundation of that wall their prayer. Rahmatam min Rabbik. All this was manifestation of the mercy of your Lord. Apparently you thought I have done something wrong. Now what is the lesson in it? In this world, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends something to me, which is not pleasant, I think it is bad. Maybe there is something good in it. Asan tohibbu shayyan wa huwa sharrul lukum. Wa asan takrahu shayyan wa huwa khairul lakum. It's just possible. You might be disliking something, but there is good for you in that. And likewise it is also possible. That you might like something, but there must be bad in it for you. So actually Allah knows and you don't know. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamu. So whatever is happening in this world to us, we should think, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some good is intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bayadihil khair. In his hand is all good. Whatever comes from him is good for me. Although apparently, immediately, instantly, it might appear to be unpleasant for me, but in the long run, if it is coming from my Lord, it must be beneficial for me. This is the lesson of Iman which Hazrat Musa, Musa wasalam, got through this journey. This is the real interpretation on, of those things on which you could not have patience. I told you the questions were, who were the people of the cave? Who was Zulkarnayn? But yes, Aluna Khan Zulkarnayn, they are asking you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about Zulkarnayn. Zulkarnayn, first of all, must understood. Karn means a horn. Karnayn, two horns. The person having two horns, who was he? Actually, he was Cyrus, Kekhorus. He was the king of Persia. Before him, Persia was divided into two, two kingdoms, Paris and Media. But when he rose to power, he joined them together. And he was the actually founder of the great Iranian empire, whose 2,500 years anniversary was, you know, you do remember the Jashan, which the, the king, emperor of Iran, I think about 20 years back, he was, a big ceremony was held. It, 2,500 years had passed. And he was the founder of the great Iranian kingdom, em, empire, and he was the founding emperor. He then attacked Babylonia. Babylonia is Iraq. After you know, west of Iran is Iraq. And Babylonia, there were the Jews who were in captivity. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylonia, who had destroyed the second temple in Jerusalem in, in the year 587 before Christ. I gave that history last night. Now it is, these things are coming together. 
So now these people, when Cyrus captured Babylonia, he allowed these Jews to go back to Jerusalem and they can go and they can have their temple again, build their temple. So these people knew him. And because he had joined two kingdoms to make one, in his, uh, what do you call this, Taj, in his crown, he fixed two horns to, be, to represent two kingdoms become, be, be, becoming one. So he is Ulkarnayn. Yasaluna kanzil kurnayn kul saatlu alaykum inhu zikra. Say to them, okay, I am going to narrate some of his, you know, some of his events to you. Inna makkanna lahu fil ard. We had established him in the land, in the earth. He was a big king. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْنْ سَبَبًا And we have given means to him for everything. فَاتْبَعَ سَبَبًا So he launched an expedition, conquest towards the west. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ So much, so, so that when he reached the place where the sun was setting, you know this coast of Mediterranean, when he reached there, now in front of him was the ocean, Mediterranean Sea. And when you stand on the coast, you think that the sun is going down in the sea. When he reached there, he found that the sun is setting in, in black muddy water. And there he found a nation. He conquered them. And we said, O Zul Iman Now you have the authority. You can chastise them if you like. Or if you like, you can do good to them. You can be kind to them. You have conquered them, but you can be kind to them. Kala, he said, Amma man zalama, fasofan wazdebuhu. Whosoever does evil, so we should also chastise him. Summa yuraddo ila rabbihi. And then he will be returned to his Lord. Fayuazdebuhu azaba nukra. And he will chastise him. In the worst form of azab. As for those who believe and they do good deeds, his good reward is secure with his Lord. And we also will be lenient to them in our affairs. Now this, this character is of a very pious person. As if he was a prophet. They say, that actually he was follower of Zartasht, the roster, and he was the Nabi. Maybe. It's just possible. But it is not mentioned in Quran. But he was under training with him. And he, as we find here, he, as if he is, a, he is one of the prophets. Just like Hazrat Yusuf The character is absolutely parallel. Summat Basa Baba, then he he prepared for another expedition. Then he reached the place where the sun rises. He found it is rising on a nation. For whom we had appointed no shelter. They say that this expedition of Zulkarnain was towards Makran, this Balochistan area. And there the people were so low uncivilized, that they didn't know how to make roofs. Their houses were only walls, walls separating each other's house, that's all, no roof. So they had no shelter from the sun. Kazalik, this is what happened. And indeed, we have all the knowledge that happened over there. What it means? We are not giving you the details. Now comes the third. Then again he prepared an expedition. It was towards the north. Until when he reached between the two barriers of mountains, he found, he found on this side of these mountains a nation, common. They were not able to understand anything. Now this is the place between two seas. The Black Sea in the west and the Caspian Sea on the east. In between them is the Caucasia. This area, mountainous area, also this 
you know, Chechnya is also a part of it. Now here are mountains and two, you know, walls of mountains. And there is a way, a broad dara, we will call it. So people from the north, Gog and Magog, used to come through this and attack here and looted them, plundered them, and then used to run back. So they, these people here, they said to Zulkarnayn, Kanu ya Zulkarnayn, they said, O oh Zulkarnayn, inna yajuja wa majuja mufsiduna fil ard. Surely yajuja and majuja, Gog and Magog, they are from the progeny of Hazrat Yafis alayhi salatu wa salam. I told you three sons of Nuh, Sam, Ham, Yafis, Shem, Ham, Yafit. And this is the progeny beyond the central mountainous regions of Asia, north of it, towards east and west both. This is the area where the progeny of Yafis alayhi salatu wa salam settled. So they are also, and the sons, the name of the sons of Yafis are given in Bible, Torah, and they include Gog and Magog. They create mischief, mischief in the land. So should we assign for you some tribute on this, that you, you erect between them and us a barrier so that they can't cross, you know, this pass, pass between the two mountains. They come through this pass and attack us and plunder us and kill us and then run back. So if you can somehow fill this gap and put a barrier over here and close this, this pass, then we shall give you annual tribute so that, you know, this, this can comp be, compensate you for, your, for what you do for us. He said, whatever my Lord has given me is much better than what you can offer me as a tribute. I don't need any wealth, no tribute. Again, the character, the moral character of the person is, I think, just the same as of the Prophet of Allah or Aliya Allah. Some very pious person. What my Lord has given me is much better than what you can offer me in tribute. But help me with manpower, labor. Come on. Work with me. I will build between you and them a wall. This wall which he created between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea between the cities of Daryal and Darband, you know, there was a gap. And this gap was filled by a wall which he built 50 miles long, 29 feet high, 10 feet broad at the top. Just like the dam, you know, Mangala Dam and Tarbela Dam. What happens? A mountain, this side, mountain, this side. And here you erect a wall. This is the dam. This dam is now, it is, the flow of the river is hampered, and now it, an artificial lake is created, and there is the water, the reservoir. Bangla and Tarbela both. But in the same way, he erected a wall over there. Atun is over al hadith. He said, Bring to me pieces of iron. Hatta idha sawa bainas sarafayam. They fill the gap with these pieces of iron. So that when they are leveled up, the gap is finished. Then he said, blow in it, make it a fire. When it was a fire, now bring to me molten brass that I pour over it. So to say, it was the reinforced concrete structure. First, you know, pieces of iron, then they were made red hot, then molten brass was poured, so it became a very, very important, very strong structure. They will not be able, neither they will be able to scale it, come over it, nor they will be able to pierce it. And he said, this is all the mercy of my Lord. I don't claim any credit for it. I don't boast of anything. This is the mercy of my Lord. فَإِذَا جَا وَعَدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّنْ دَكَّا وَكَانَ وَعَدُ رَبِّي حَقَّا When the command of my Lord will come, then this will become a powder. 
this strong thing that I have made, it will not, not remain. It will become a powder. And the promise of my Lord is going to be true. It is going to happen. At one time it will not be there, and it is now not there. There are some remains at that place. That is why the, place, the name of the Darband. Darband means in, in Persian, where the door has been closed. Darband. So Darband is the name of that place, where this, do, this wall existed. But now there is no wall. It has gone. وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَ يَزِي يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ وَنُفِقَ فِي السُّورِ And when that time will come, we shall leave them surging into each other, fighting. And then the trumpet shall be blown. Now this surah began with the warning of a war. Alhamdulillah, he lazi anzala ala abdil kitaba wa lam yajallahu e waja. Qayyaman le yunzira baasan shadeedam milla dunho. Wa yubashir al mu'minin al lazina ya maluna salihat yana lahum ajran hasana. Ma kisina fi abada. And this is now ending here. Again, there will be a very big war. People and Gog and Magog will intermingle with each other. They will run into each other's columns. Yamuj of Ibadin, surging against one another. And the trumpet shall be blown. And then we shall gather all humanity together for the day of judgment. And on that day, we shall present Jahannam, hell, for these Disbelievers, they can see it now with their own eyes. Alladina kanat ayunuhum fi zitain and zikri. Those people whose eyes were blind to my remembrance, they never remembered me. They never knew me. They never loved me. They never served me. But now, this is the denbakanu la yastatiyuna samaha. And they were not listening to my revelation and my ayat. So here, this eleventh section comes to an end. But now the time is not with us for the twelfth section, last section. So this we shall have to uh, complete, inshallah, tomorrow. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.